Excellent. Happy birthday, Hannah Roth. All Welcome right. back to Triple F. We have Stuart Holden on the line. And Stewie, you got an email. Tamaris is going to read it to you. Stewie? Did you just call him Stewie? Stewie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just called him Stewie. Everyone. All right, Tamaris. Come on, Tamaris. Hi, Stu. Hey, hi. Hi, hi. hi. Carol from Portland says she's very sad about your teammate, Charlie Davies, and sends her deepest regards. Obviously, this affected your team immensely before and during the Costa Rica game. Can you describe the overall emotion and feeling before, during, and after the match? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Charlie, as I think as everybody who follows me and uh, him on Twitter, you know, knows that we are, you know, we're best friends and, you know, we room together on the road. And so, you know, it was tough when, you know, when, when I first found the news and then obviously when, uh, you know, we had a team meeting and everybody, you know, as it was spreading around and everybody was told what was going on. So I think emotionally at first, everybody's just concerned about his health. And, um, you know, once we found out that he was, he was in a stable condition, it was kind of a, you know, a bit of a sigh of relief, but, you know, obviously you're, you're thinking about him and, you know, some of the, the tributes and the emails and even the messages I've been getting have been, uh, you know, overwhelming and and to pass on to him. So I can't even imagine, you know, the number of emails and calls and, and texts that everybody's been sending. And, you know, I, I spoke to Charlie briefly um, just the other day, and, you know, from from the sounds of it, he's he's coming along. And, um, you know, I think he's, uh, he's, in, he's in good spirits, and, and everybody's well wishes obviously goes a long way with that. And, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, to getting Charlie back on the field, you know, as soon as he can. But, you know, he knows it's going to be a long recovery. And uh, all you can do is, is wish him the best and, uh, and be there with him every step of the way. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's uh, take some calls. Let's go to Max in Texas. Hey, Max, what's your question for Stuart? Hey, how's it going? First, let me say that, Eric, I'm glad you're on the show. I'm a huge fan. I actually started watching uh, again once you got on the show. And Stu actually went all the way from Houston to D.C. just to see you play. I think you had a great game. Um, there was a beautiful turn that you did in, in the second uh, quarter. That it, was just, it was amazing. But uh, my question is, um, obviously my thoughts are, are with Davies as well, but I think that when, when you play with a team, I mean, from Gold Cup to now, I mean, you develop this chemistry, you develop this confidence in each other. And now, you know, not long, uh, having to tinker with the back, having to tinker with the front, what do you think our options are or what is a team doing to sort of quickly get back on track and, and get that confidence with each other and to get that chemistry with each other? Yeah, I think, um, you know, whether it be with club team or, you know, or internationally, you know, there, there's injuries are part of the game. And, uh, you know, it, injuries given other players a chance to step up. So, you know, obviously with Gooch being down and uh, also having Jay sidelined, um, it's going to give, you know, players like Chad Marshall or, you know, Jimmy Conrad and, and guys like that that have been in the mix, uh, you know, another chance and a great opportunity to, to – try and you know push themselves in there for for the world cup and um you know as far as up front you know we have some great we still have some great strikers you know we have Josie and, and Connor Casey Brian Ching you know you can play Landon up there you can play Clint up there I mean the, the options at the international level are you know in abundance and uh, I think you know as you said chemistry is important and um you know there's going to be a lot of friendlies leading up to the world cup and there's going to be a lot of time for you know, for for guys to get um, reacquainted with each other and, and keep playing and, and keep that confidence going because I think you know U.S. soccer right now has a bit of a, a bit of swagger about it and you know we know that you know we have the ability to in order to do something special and uh, you know we have some great players and you know a great coach and and uh, some great support so you know if all the pieces fall into place come uh, come the World Cup in, in South Africa I think uh, you know you should, you can see some great things from the U.S. team. Thanks for the call. Let's go to uh, Casey in California. What's your question, Casey? Uh, basically just uh, an extension of what the last caller asked. Um, with the absence of Charlie Davies and Aguchi Onyewu, and, you know, not a big player pool to choose from, uh, what are the chances, you know, that MLS players that possibly get the call-up, what are the chances that they'll be actually World Cup ready for next summer? And uh, what, the, what do you think they'll be able to contribute to the team? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing with MLS is that, you know, players are, that are called in are players that are playing regularly. And uh, I think uh, that's something that was touched upon earlier in the show and that, you know, it's important for, for players to keep playing and, and getting that game experience and keeping that fitness. And so, you know, MLS is a good league. I think sometimes, you know, in the, on the world stage, it's maybe looked down upon a little bit. But, you know, having played, played in it uh, now for four years and having played in England for a year, you know, the, the standard in, the, in MLS is, is very good. And, 
you know these guys that are playing here and that that are doing well uh once when when they get the opportunity with the national team and they're put around you know what's what's uh, the best players in the u s it, it makes you better as as a player yourself so I think you know if players are, are given that opportunity and uh you know with with friendly games and and all the other uh things leading up to the World Cup next summer I think uh, it's you know you'll those guys are going to have a great opportunity to show well. Uh thank you for the call Scott in Montana. Yeah, I'd love to congratulate Stuart and the whole entire team on what should be considered a, a tremendous victory. I think the media got it right. The the crowd was crazy. The people at home got an object lesson and why a draw can be a win. Um, you got revenge on Costa Rica, sent them to Uruguay. Um, you got revenge on Mexico. You took number one. And uh, Bornstein's the king of Honduras. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that a question or just a big statement? Yeah, it was a good statement. Yeah. Well, it just makes U.S. and CONCACAF look great. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't think we we quite realized that the, when that goal went in and we're and we're celebrating the quite the extent that it you know it turned the tables in the in the in the in the standings because you know as everybody's running around celebrating, everyone's like, what happened in the Honduras game? What happened in the Honduras game? And you know, it was a uh, it was quite a thing to, to hear that radio broadcast and. To hear that Bornstein has been offered a you know free vacation and and all the rest of it, we're all trying to wonder if we get free vacations also. <laughs> yeah, Stuart, uh, Eric brought up a good point a couple of segments ago. He's talking about some of the MS players and and the fact that the the season runs into the World Cup and is there, is there going to be a case where some of the national team players who play in MLS are not going to be going 100 percent because they do realise that you know South Africa is just two months into the season. Um. No, I think any time you step onto the field, you, you know, you always give 110%. And I think when you start, for me, when you start to think about, you know, not getting injured or, or not, or, you know, maybe playing half-hearted, that, you know, that's when those those things do occur. And uh, I think, uh, you know, players that leading up to the World Cup two months before, they want to make sure that they're in, the, you know, top form and, and playing well and firing on all cylinders. So, you know, when once you step into that training camp with the with the full team before, uh, you know, taking off to South Africa, that that you're you're the, giving yourself the best shot to to be a starter with that team. Oh, the biggest question will be, where will you be yeah. at, at that <laughs> at that time? <laughs> well, we're not going to make you answer that. Uh, it's, it's still a big question. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> well, Stuart, thank you so much for calling in, and you're welcome on Fox Football Phone in any time. Yeah, I appreciate it. I've, I've got to give a shout out to my roommates because they're all crowded around watching it on the TV downstairs, <laughs> giving me a hard time. So I had to go upstairs. So, but Eric, you struck Mike Chabal and Danny Cruz, and then also my my brother will get really mad at me. He's a a senior at New Mexico right now. So watch out for him. He's going to be uh, the next player in the MLS. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Stuart Holden, and uh, best of luck coming up in the playoffs. I right, appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot.